Hi guys, welcome to this SPSS assassin video on how to complete independent samples, one-way ANOVAs. So we're going to use these tests if we have an independent variable that has at least three levels. If the variable had fewer levels, if it had two, we would use a t-test instead. So let's imagine that we've got a cycling race and some of our participants are completing a flat course, some are completing an uphill course, and the rest are completing a downhill course. So we might imagine that those in the downhill course will be faster than those in the flat course and that those in the flat course in turn will be faster than those in the uphill course. So we can use this test to determine whether those differences are significant. So let's go to SPSS. Let's go to the variable view and we'll type the name of the independent variable into this top cell. So in this case it's going to be course. Then we'll use this values column to indicate what the individual levels of that variable are. So we'll type a 1 here, we'll type flat, then 2, then uphill, then 3, and downhill. All right. And then we'll use the measures column to indicate that this is a nominal variable. Next, let's type in time here, so that's the dependent variable, and we'll use the measures column again to indicate that this is a scale variable in this case. Let's go to data view and we can see that course and time have appeared at the top of these two columns. So we have 10 people in the flat condition, 10 in the uphill condition, and 10 in the downhill condition. So let's type 10 ones here, 10 twos, and then 10 threes. And then let's just copy and paste the data from this table into SPSS. So here's the data for the flat people, they go in here, here's the cyclists in the uphill condition, and finally the cyclists in the downhill condition. Okay, so once we have the data entered, let's go to Analyze, then to General Linear Model, and then to Univariate. We'll transfer course to the Fixed Factors box, and time to the Dependent Variable box. We'll go to Post Hoc. We'll move this across, and we'll check Bonferroni. We'll go to the, the Options button, and we'll tick Descriptive Statistics and Estimates of Effect Size. OK, so if you look at this means, means table first, or this Descriptive Statistics table, we can see that the results correspond to what we would expect. So those in the upper condition took longer than those in the flat condition, and those in the flat condition took longer than those in the downhill condition. If we look at this column of this table, and if we look specifically at the course row, we can see that the sig or p-value is less than 0 0.05, and so we conclude that there was a significant effect of race time, or of race course on race time. If we look at this post hoc test table, we can break that result down a bit. So we can see that there was a significant difference between those in the flat and the uphill conditions because this value is less than 0 0.05. However, there wasn't a difference between those in the flat and downhill conditions because this value is above 0 0.05. Finally, if we look at the difference between those in the uphill and downhill conditions, we can see that there was a significant difference. So how do we report these results in accordance to APA guidelines? Let's take a look at this example. So we start by first just saying why we did the test. So we were interested in why or whether um, race type had an effect on race time. We'll start by reporting the, the values that are in this table here. So we'll say there was a significant effect of course on race time. And then we'll report the degrees of freedom, so 2 and 27. These have come from here and here. We report the F value, so in this case it's 13.50, that has come from here. So this value here has been rounded to two decimal places. We'll say that P was less than 0 0.001, that's because this value here is 0 0.000. And we'll say that the effect size value was 0 0.50, again that's been rounded to two decimal places. Next, we'll report the results of the Bonferroni postal comparisons. So we're going to say that there was a significant difference between those in the uphill 
and flat conditions. There was a significant difference between those in the uphill and downhill conditions, but there wasn't a significant difference between those in the flat and downhill conditions. So that's what we've said in this last sentence here. In addition to saying that, we've also provided the means and standard deviations, and all of those values have just come from this table here. So that's, that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them for you. Thanks for watching.